This is Kimberly from Lakeside Loops and this is the video tutorial for the Blair Beach Poncho. You can make this poncho in toddler, so age like one to three, all the way up to teen sizes. Um, this is a knitting pattern. I do a lot of crochet. You can see that on my YouTube channel. And this is one of the first couple of knitting patterns that I am sharing on my channel. I used Lion Brands 24-7 cotton yarn in two different colors. I used their white and their sky, which is just a really pretty blue. And I also used a pair or a, a circular a set of circular uh, knitting needles. So they're attached like this. And I will show you how to use circular knitting needles. I also used a darning needle to seam uh, the different sections that we're going to make together and to attach, sorry, attach the fringe at the bottom of this poncho. The full instructions on how to make this poncho can be found on my blog, lakesideloops.com. You can find everything you need there for free. Um, there are pictures, all of the written, written instructions, yardage, uh, stitch counts, everything you need is there on the blog for free. You can also download a printable, savable version of this pattern from Etsy or Ravelry. And you can even order a kit from the Lion Brand website. So with that, you will get the digital pattern as well as all the yarn needed to make this project. This pattern is knitted in rows from the bottom up. You're going to be creating a front panel, a back panel, a hood and then you're going to seam it all together and add your fringe. I'm going to walk you through the basics so just all the parts that you might have questions about that are in the written pattern I'm just going to be working up an itty bitty sample size so that we can get through this video tutorial um, as quickly as possible keep it short and sweet for you. All right so to cast on I have my ball of yarn here and my end of yarn is right here and I want to create a long tail so I'm going to pull yarn off of this ball and I read somewhere along the way that you should pull off or have a tail of one inch for every stitch that you need to cast on. I've found that to be pretty generous. Um, for example in this pattern it says to cast on 95 for the toddler size, 111 for the little kid, 135 for the big kid, and 159 for the teen. Um, but if you want to, you know, err on the side of caution, you could do one inch per stitch. Um, again, I find that to be a bit much, but so you want to pull some yarn this way, and then once you feel like you have enough on this side, again, if you want to play it safe, one inch per cast on. Um, you're going to create a knot. So you're going to make a loop like this. So you can see the yarn goes behind here and then over the front. I'm going to take my finger and my thumb inside that loop from behind. I'm going to grab this yarn and pull it through. And that will be my first stitch that I'm casting on. So now I'm going to put my one end of my needle through there. Now I'm going to take my, hold my yarn in this hand like this. I'm going to take my thumb and put it over top and wrap my yarn around my thumb like that and then grab this needle and put it up through that yarn. I'm going to take this end of the yarn that's heading towards my ball and I'm going to wrap it around my needle and then I'm going to take this loop that's over my thumb and pull it over the top of the needle and then pull it like this. That's my second stitch that I've cast on. So again, I'm gonna hold this yarn in my hand, put my thumb down over top, bring my thumb down and back up to wrap the yarn around my thumb, bring my needle up through that loop that I've created around my thumb, take the yarn that's on this side attached to this ball and I'm going to wrap it bring it around the back to the front around my needle. Now I'm going to take this loop and bring it over the top of my needle and then pull to tighten it up a little bit. Now I've cast on three. So I'm going to do this a couple of more times a little faster. Again, I'm just going to be working up a little tiny sample size, the smallest little poncho you've ever seen. 
um, just for the sake of this video tutorial, just to show you how the stitches are made, um, how to do color changes. Yours, your work will be much larger than mine. I'm just gonna cast on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches. All right, so as you cast on your stitches, um, this yarn that's on this side, this tail is gonna get shorter and shorter and shorter because you're using it up to cast on these stitches. You will probably still have some tail left. You can trim it and or you can tie a little knot in the end of it because you wanna make sure that you don't accidentally knit with it because it's a tail to nowhere. Eventually it runs out, right? You wanna be knitting with this thread that's attached, or this yarn, sorry, that's attached to the ball. So once you've cast on all of your stitches, row two is that we're going to knit all of our stitches. So I hold my yarn in this hand, you may hold it in the other hand, do whatever feels most comfortable to you. If you're a new knitter and this is your first project, um, so you want all of your stitches sort of lined up nice and neat and all the stitches that you cast on are going to be on this side of your circular needle. You're going to grab the other end of your circular, circular needle and we're going to be transferring stitches from this side to this side. So I'm holding my yarn here. I'm going to insert this needle through my stitch like this. I'm going to grab my yarn and pull it through and then slide that stitch off of this needle. And now I've got a stitch that I've knitted over on this needle. So again, I'm gonna insert my hook this way, grab my yarn and pull it through, slide that stitch off. The stitch that we use, or the set of stitches we use to create this poncho are the knit stitch, which is what I'm showing you now, and the purl stitch, which is what I'll show you for our next row. And the combination of knitting one row and purling the next row is called stockinette. So what it does is it creates a side of all knit and a side of all purl stitches. So this is knit, this is purl. And by alternating in each row, we get one side that's consistently this and one side that's consist consistently looks like this. So I've knit all those stitches. Now my stitches have gone from this needle or this side of my circular knitting needle to this side. All I need to do is flip my circular knitting needle so that my work is back on this side and this needle is in the clear. And now we're going to work on row three. So row three is the purl stitch. So for the purl stitch, we are going to, again, I hold my yarn in this hand, but I'm going to have it on the front of my work. When I was knitting, I had my yarn, I was holding it back here. Now I'm going to hold it here in the front. And I'm going to take my needle and instead of going into my stitch like this, I'm gonna go into it like this. Oops. Just like this, and I'm gonna grab my yarn and wrap it around my needle, pull that through, and then pull the stitch off. So pull it through, pull the stitch off, and this is the purl stitch. So you're going to purl all the stitches in this row. And this is basically all you need to know to do this pattern. You're either knitting or you're purling. And once you get the hang of it, it's a lot of fun. And I just like to pull down just to make everything nice and neat. So you can kind of see this side's gonna be the purls, and this side, you can start to see the knitted stitches. So now that I have all of my work on this side of my circular knitting needle, hang on here. Again, all you have to do to move on is switch sides and now I'm ready to knit my next row. So I'm just going to again be moving all the stitches from here over to here. Um, you're going to have again a lot more stitches that you're working on. This is just a very basic workup. I'm now going to show you how to change colors. Alright so again this is just a quick summary of 
all the little things that you need to know to create the pattern. The full instructions are on the blog. You're going to continue working um, row two and row three, so just the purl and knit, purl and knit, for quite a few more rows before you're gonna get into the color changes. But I'm skipping ahead here and I'm gonna show you how I did the color changes. So once I had completed a row and I was working on knit stitches next. So in the pattern it says, complete 33 rows, 37 rows, 45 or 49 rows, depending on which size you're making. And then the next row is going to be in a different color. So it's going to be all knit stitches, but in a different color. So all I do is drop my blue yarn and pick up my white yarn. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail about that long and I'm going to hold my yarn right there in my hand and I'm going to create my first knit, knitted stitch by just grabbing on to that white yarn. Sorry, got to focus there. I'm pulling it through. And I'm going to tighten up on the blue. Whew. Sorry guys. Where is it? There it is. I'm trying to do this through the camera lens and it's proving to be quite difficult. I apologize. So there, I've got my white yarn on my uh, hook or needle that's on this side and I'm gonna pull that blue stitch off and I'm gonna continue knitting with the white yarn. So I'm just gonna pause here. You can see my blue yarn that I was using, my white tail, this goes to nowhere, uh, and it's quite loose. Don't worry about that right now. When we're all done, you can go back, tie these, um, or sorry, tie this in a knot and tighten it up and tuck uh, the end and weave the end in once your garment is complete. You don't need to worry about that at this point. So you're just gonna keep knitting and every color change, you are going to do it for two rows. So I've knitted my first row in that color, and now I'm going to switch and do my next row in pearl in this color. So it's always two rows. We're always making the switch, the color changes on the row that we're knitting, and the row that we're purling always stays in whatever color we just did our knitted row in. All right, so you can see I've completed my first two rows in this contrasting color. In the written pattern, when you first start doing color changes, um, you're going to do either four or six rows in the contrasting color because you, you're going to have one thicker stripe before you get into the smaller stripes um, for the rest of the poncho. But just to, again, skip ahead and make this faster, I'm just gonna do these two rows and I'm gonna show you how I switch back to the blue. It's pretty simple. Uh, I just give my white a little tighten up there and then I'm just going to drop it and I'm going to pick up my blue um, and it's still attached to my work from when I dropped it and I'm just going to start knitting with it and again this first stitch is going to or maybe even your first couple are going to be a little loose um, but you can go back and tighten those up after the fact by pulling on this white thread if you need to so I'm just going to knit one row and then again purl the next row in this blue and then I'm going to switch back to the white. So I'm just going to say again, your piece will again be much longer this way widthwise and then it's also going to be longer in terms of how many rows you've done before you start switching colors. You really need to follow the written pattern. This video tutorial is just going over any of the parts that you might have questions about. So I would switch back curl this and then again pick up this white instead of the blue to knit and purl my next two rows. If you're trying to count how many rows you've completed, I find once my piece gets quite large, I get a little bit cross-eyed when I'm trying to count how many rows I've completed. I get mixed up. I find the easiest way is to take a knitting needle and poke a hole through the center of each knitted, sorry, 
each knitted stitch and that helps me keep track as I count up. So one, two, three, four, five, and then the one on your needle counts as number six. Once you've completed your front and back panels, I give you the measurements within the written pattern if you do want to block them. I did block mine, um, and I do find it made my stitches look a little bit neater and more consistent, but my sides still do roll, um, and I actually like how that looks on the finished piece. Um, so I did block it, it was all flat, but the sides still do roll a bit, which is factored into the pattern and is, and is okay. Um, your hood is just using one consistent color, and again, it's worked in rows, um, turned rows back and forth, um, very similar to how you um, worked up your front and back panels. Then we get into the seaming. So you're going to take your two panels, and at the top of them where you have your striping is where, sorry, when it's turned inside out, so your purl side is facing up, um, and your knitted side is facing each other on the inside, you're going to knit across, or sorry, stitch your front and back panels together across the top on both sides, creating a hole in the middle where you're going to attach your hood. And I go over in the written pattern exactly how many stitches to sew together, um, how many stitches to leave open for the hood. I'll include a picture of that here. And that picture was just an example of the uh, big kid size. If you're doing one of the other sizes, again, in the written instructions, it says exactly how many stitches to sew together and to leave open for your hood. For your hood, again, with the purl side facing out and the two knitted sides um, facing in toward one another. So you're going to fold it in half and you're going to seam together along one long side. The other side is going to curl a little bit and that's okay. We're actually going to work with that um, and this will be the opening of your hood. Along the bottom of your hood, again with the purl side still facing out, knit side facing down, you're going to sort of roll this side over the way it naturally does and seam together um, some stitches along here to kind of hold that roll uh, and keep it consistent when you're wearing your hood or your child is wearing their hood, or your grandchild. <laughs> All right, so with your pearl side of your poncho still facing out, um, so it's it's inside out essentially, and your it's seamed together at the top, your hood is seamed together and the pearl side is facing you, you're going to attach your hood by seaming your hood and your poncho front and back panels together. Um, I, you can just go stitch for stitch, and I go over how many stitches to sew, and you're just going, I started, I centered my seam of my hood along the center of the opening on my back poncho. And I started here and I went this way all the way around to the front. And then I started here and went this way all around to meet in the front. So I started here and I sewed this together all the way around, sewed where the seam is, all the way, kept going until I got to the end of my hood, which happens to be, there's two center stitches here. This is, this is the center right here. So they're one stitch away from the center. And then I went back and I started on this side and I sewed all the way around. And you can see here, I pulled some of it apart to show you. So I just sewed and sewed and sewed. And I have to finish sewing this together and it should line up once I sew it stitch for stitch so that it's two stitches that aren't sewn together or sew into the hood in the middle. If yours comes right to the center, that's okay. Or if you have four stitches uh, or three stitches, that's okay too. Um, that's how mine worked out and the math that's in the pattern. But as your, if yours is a little bit off, that's okay. It's not gonna change the look of the finished poncho. Once you have that all sewn on, you can turn your poncho right side out, pull your hood through, and now I will show you how to add the fringe. 
All right, so for the fringe, you're going to cut several strands of yarn, and I go through the exact sizes that you need to cut and how many you need to cut in the written pattern. You're going to take your strand, one strand, fold it in half, and you're going to take both ends and feed them through the bottom of your darning needle. Then you're going to look at your very first row at the bottom of your poncho, and you're going to take your needle and insert it through the center of that first stitch, pulling those ends through to the top of your poncho. And then you've got this loop. Sorry, that was my dog who just sneezed, if that picked up on the camera. Then you're going to take this loop on the bottom and you're going to put your fingers through it and grab those two strands and pull them to create this knot at the top. And that is how you attach the fringe to your poncho. So you just work around the front panel and then do this all again on the back panel. So that is it for this video tutorial. I really hope that it helped you with the written pattern and answered any questions that you might have had. If you're still not sure about a certain part of the pattern, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, and I love to see your finished pictures on social media. So please don't forget to tag me at Lakeside Loops. I can't wait to see what colors uh, you work this poncho up in and all the pictures of your sweet kiddos or grandkiddos or friends kiddos wearing it. Hope you're having a wonderful summer. Take care.